this is Jeremiah. We're on probably 32 here. Um, I'll, 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 I'll change the number later. This is 15, 32. And this is category 15, which is science 2022, science, fact, or fiction. And right now we're dealing with heaven and earth. And uh, just to let you know, we're, we have a, a bunch of astrology lessons that I might just uh, drag on over here from the other playlist, um, from the other channel. But um, And I might do it again. I might go over those... Uh, those signs again. I, I when I do in in my astrology lessons, which which is a part of science here. It, it, it's um, I will probably share with you just the twelve signs and a few decans. I'm not going to go through all the decans and all of the small signs and so forth uh, that that support the big sign. So there's a, you know, there, there's the big sign and then there's three uh, there's uh, thirty six uh, smaller or uh, supporting signs or what they are is basically supporting ideas or subtext. The main text is usually the sign itself, the, the big sign, such as uh, Libra, the Libra sign, the scales are the big sign or the main idea. And then there's things like Corona Borealis, which support it, which is one of the smaller groups of stars. Big group of stars, with three smaller groups of stars, to put it in a very simple uh, format for you. I will not go through every decan. That would take forever, and if you, there are people who go through those decans for you online. There are a lot of Christians who spend a lot of time on this. I will give you a minimal uh, cursory look at uh, the 12. Uh, I'll go through the main ideas. Because the Bible says that, that, that the, we looked at David, where he talked about Day to day, day to day, uttereth speech, and they, they don't say a word. The stars, but they actually speak to you. That's what Brother David means. You're getting signs and signals and messages from images, and then when you read the star names, you come away with a concrete conclusion as to what's being said by Father in his star story. Okay, okay, it's just one big giant circle of stories or ideas, okay, that are related to salvation, heaven and earth, and, and war, and so forth, okay? Jeremiah is going to get into this now as we just rejoice in the name of Jesus, and we do everything in that name. Uh, we love the name. We love the owner of the name. We glorify the name. We, we, we make it shine forth, and, and that's magnifying the Lord. And we'll magnify the Lord together as we rejoice together in the koinonia of God, the love of God, and we share his wondrous love and his, obviously here, amazing truth uh, pertaining to uh, creation and letting us know exactly what's going on with creation. And let me share something with you. As we have no one here because the Lord is our shepherd and when you look at these uh, scriptures and so forth, one thing you come away with, God is not that much interested in giving you a lot of numbers. Some of you may, may have noticed that. I used to teach a little math. And, and one thing you've noticed here is that God is not giving you precise numbers as to how far away he is, uh, you know, the, the measurement of certain things. Uh, Job just said, how far are the clouds above you and so forth. So, God doesn't mind keeping you, uh, you know, a little, uh, guessing a little bit as to the exact measurement of the things he, he's created or where he is. But he gives you a very simple, uh, obviously a very simple perspective as to, as to, as to where he is just in, uh, in, in, in general terms so that you, you get a good idea of where he is. And I'm giving you some of that now where, where when the Bible says that God looks at us, for instance, as grasshoppers. Well, there you go. So if God's looking at you as grasshoppers, then that means that there must be some kind of close relationship uh, to where he is. 
Yeah, mathematics is uh, uh, Isaiah 40, 12. Who has, me who has measured, or hath, H-A-T-H, measured the heaven, or measured the waters, in the hollow of his hand? And who has meted, or measured out, with the span, and comprehended the dust of the earth? in a measure, and weighed the, the mountains and scales and the hills in a balance. And of course, see, the next scripture is overarching of that. Who has directed the Spirit of, spirit of the Lord? No one, no one has, 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 has told God how to measure anything. When we, when we get into the scientific data here, but we can easily conclude that the base is relative to the height Listening to Job talk, it's very simple. Men look like grasshoppers and, uh, and all of this. Well, well what, else, what else can you conclude? Because Isaiah, Isaiah and David and Job are basically your three main resources or three of your main resources of, of ascertaining uh, what where you are and, and what's going on. And of course, 4022, we have, we have the, the, the grasshopper reference and, and, the, and, and he spread the heavens like a tent to dwell in. So evidently the heavens above you is shaped as a tent and he spread it out as over you. So for me to say that God created a tent over you, and there's water on top of the tent, uh, is very easy to conclude. We, we, we can move on. And that it's also a tabernacle for the sun and the moon, which means the sun and the moon are circling under the tent. Between you and the tent. This is it. We, we can move on. Let's, let, let's move on. And, and before we go, let, let, let's look at the grasshopper reference, Isaiah 40, 22. It is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth. So he's sitting upon a circle of the earth. There's no mention of a ball. There's no mention of a curve. It's a circle. It's a plate. That's another word for plate. And the Bible says he sees the ends of the earth. We're going to get into that. He sees all the way to the end. Balls don't have an end. Balls don't have boundaries. What they told me in school, which, which I told them that I don't know if I don't know if I go along with that. Especially moving 400 yards a second. I, I never bought into that. Or I don't want to use the word bought. I never put confidence in those uh, assumptions. Uh-uh. I had a good friend years ago when I was young. He told me he didn't like anything about outer space. And see, God gave him a revelation because he was right. Why spend time looking and thinking about things that don't exist? What we've gone through here is simple and we're just about done. Let's go to, let's say, let's read it one more time. It is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth, and the inhabitants thereof are as grasshoppers. And what do you put a tent on? You don't put a tent on a ball. You put a tent on a floor. All of this is very simple, and we're going to move on. Uh, I wanted to mention grasshoppers again. Uh, let, let, let's back up even more. Uh, let's go to 21. Have ye not understood the foundations of the earth? So we're getting into the foundations now. See, that's what we're talking about. This is the center of the Old Testament. Before we get to the kings, who, 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 who most of them or many of them went kind of wild, 
and, uh, and they didn't behave very well, and so forth, uh, starting with Solomon and going all the way to Malachi and, and the, uh, the Maccabees and the Maccabean revolt and all of this uh, information pertaining to the changing of the guard uh, from uh, Babylon to Persia to Greece and then to Rome. And your transition big head might be Antiochus. But let's, let's continue with this here. Uh, the sun and moon, he walketh in a circuit, which is 22. Uh, that's Job 22, 14. We already mentioned that. We're going to mention one more time. That the sun walks in a circuit. And so does the moon. It's a circuit. A circuit means a circle or a line. So I was told that the sun didn't move or something along those lines, or we move around the sun or something. Well, the Bible teaches that we sit still on a platform and the sun moves. If a man down the street tells me something, I, I, I will be uh, respectful to the individual and kind to them if they, if they tell me something that contradicts the word of God. If they continue and persist to do so, then I might get a little disturbed because I don't want anyone to contradict Father. I don't want them to do that. And what, what will happen is, is that it will change our relationship from a friendly relationship to maybe I should leave this individual alone because they're resisting the truth. Okay? Now that's just the way it goes. And of course, we have the end of, uh, of, uh, of Noah's trip in Genesis 9.13. I do set my bow. So the rainbow you see, God calls it his bow, which means it, it's quite logical to conclude that, that that is what's over Father's head. It's his firmament or his glow. Because God used the stars to illuminate the night. So that the night is not pitch dark along with the moon. Although it's minimal amount of light, it's still light. He used the weak lights for the evening. Otherwise it wouldn't be evening. Okay? Genesis 1 6, we talked about dividing the waters. And you can see that the dirt is basically dividing the waters and with the oxygen uh, in the atmosphere. And now we have, let's go to water boundaries and see at the ends of the earth. All we have to do is go to Job 26. And there we are, Job 28. Once again, these gentlemen are, are uh, and, and these books are, are close to each other. The Lord is making it very easy for us to study this. We don't have to turn very many pages to look at how God created things. He did it on purpose. So that when we're turning these pages, we don't have to go all the way to the back, all the way to the front. All we got to do is just go a little, turn a few pages, and I'm turning the pages with you, and uh, I'm going over this again. I have not gone over this uh, a hundred uh, times. I've only been over this a few times. Because it, uh, we have to take time for other parts of your Bible, correct? But this is a very significant part of your body, Bible because God wouldn't put it in here if he didn't want you to read it. That's the point. Bible study it just goes on and on for hours and hours and hours. And heaven and earth and science fact or fiction here and all of these physics and the physical properties and the, uh, uh, you know, Geography and so forth, and uh, we, it's right here in your Bible. Let's go to uh, 28, 24. For he looketh to the ends of the earth, and seeth under the whole heaven. So here we go with some more science that's in stone here. He sees what? He sees everything. There's no other side of anything 
There's no ball here. There's no uh, uh, box of, uh, you know, there's no sides. There's no bottom here. And even what's under the earth is naked. We just looked at that. God can see it. We'll, we'll probably go over that again. But he, he sees everything clearly. But the, the point we're, 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 I'm bringing home now is, is that he sees the entire mesa and waters, the, all the ends. It's quite clear here what's going on. Here. There's nothing really to to uh, uh, to dissect, or you know, it's very simple. He looked to the to the he looked to the ends of the earth. So that means he can see the end. And now, end means he's seeing everything. That that's what's denoted here, or we, we might say implied. But let's keep going. And seeth under the whole heaven. So when Father looks down, in a periscope kind of view, he sees all of the heaven and he sees the ends of the earth. So that means that there is no other place for heaven. It's very simple. He looks left and right when he's looking down, and he sees everything on a plate. That's, that's all, and it's quite easy to, to, to see that. And this is wonderful that you're getting a perspective here of Big Daddy. This is what Daddy sees. Which means in one viewpoint, in one circle, he sees everything. All the stars, all the everything, and, and, and based upon simple math, we're, we're looking at a 24,000 mile roughly uh, 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 diameter here. So he's looking down in one spot from one perspective, and he sees all the stars, which means there are no stars to the left of him, there are no stars to the right of him, and there are no stars on top of him. It's wonderful to, to read your Bible and take your, take your time and pay attention to the scriptures because that's what enlightens you. I had someone ask me the other day, they, they said, why don't you spend more time getting another job or get more money or do this? Well, see, those are people who don't love Jesus Christ and they don't, and they don't love his word. They, they, and it's sad because they're missing out, aren't they? We just read that scripture where it says, good, you're missing out on the goods. You know, you're, you're kind of like the rodent in the in the cage that, that, that spins the wheel. He's inside that little. He's, he's inside the wheel, and he's just spinning and spinning. And he actually thinks he's going somewhere, and that he's doing something productive. But he's not going anywhere because he sees the wheel turning. This is sad that people have chosen to ignore this beautiful Bible here, and everything is in it. Let, let, let's go to verse 23. Who understandeth the way thereof, and he knoweth the place thereof. So he understands where the place is. And there's never any, any, any mention of the place, of any place we're talking about having any movement at all, except for the circuit of the sun and the moon. They circle. Everything else is, is set on pillars, and, 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 and the, the foundations of heaven are, are will never be moved. Psalm 104.5, who laid the foundations of the earth that it should never be moved. That's it. Psalm 104.5. The foundations of the earth, we're, we're going to get into now, that it should never be moved. 
You know what the word moved means? But I, it means not, not to move. It's, <laughs> I mean, it, it, this is very simple. And let's move on. We're, we're, we're going to get into that right now. We're going to get into the earth foundations. Now, we, we, we talked about sea at the ends and the water boundaries. And that's, we can go to 2610. He hath compassed the waters. We mentioned this before. Job 26.10. He hath compassed the waters with bounds until the day and night come to an end. The water has an end. Uh, I did reference that scripture where the Bible says that he, he doesn't want the water to go over the side. He doesn't want the water to have two sides. There's some more science for you. We're going to wrap this up because we just about we just about exhausted. I mean, then Psalm one hundred two twenty-five. Let's turn there. We're just about done here. I mean, this is beautiful stuff here. Uh, very simple science. Here. This this is not like. Uh, Learning the magnification of, you know, uh, of a microscope and then measure the, the, the size of the, the, the image on the Petri dish to find out the size and the, you know, all, all that stuff that we had to go through in biology class. We, we're not, we don't have to do that here. There's, there's no need to do really any of that. Uh, I might add some of that sometime down the road, but not right now. Let's go to 102... Um, we'll go to 102 25 of old thou hast laid the foundation of the earth and the heavens are the works of thy hands now the Lord's going to change them in the subsequent scriptures and we can see that when the Bible it says a new heaven and a new earth at the end of the book of Revelation. We're not going to talk about that right now. That, that's some more science for you where we're, God's going to change and uh, with a new heaven and a new earth, Revelation 21. But until then, it's not going to be changed. And, and we can see by the change that it's, it's not going to be changed too much in terms of heaven and earth. Uh, I don't think so, but we won't go into that right now. Of old hast thou laid the foundation of the earth. So it has a foundation. Now, I don't know if you know what the word foundation means, or the words we're using like sit of still or is at rest, and he you know he founded the earth. And what we have here is a very simple observation for for elementary school, junior high, and, and of course high school too without even going to college or a higher education, we have a very simple presentation here of heaven and earth, and it's quite simple here. But the illustration I have for you here is quite accurate. Okay? And, we, and now we're getting into the bounds of the earth, we're getting into the ends of the earth, and, and Job 28 has the ends of the earth, and we can go there just for a moment, because we're just about done with this board. Uh, I'm going to put some other things up here, but uh, uh, let's go back to book 18 in your Bible. And let's go to 20... Let's go to 28-24. We just looked at 28-24. For he looketh to the ends of the earth, and sitteth under the whole, the whole heaven or seeth under the whole heaven. Which means with, with one look and one perspective, he, he sees it all. And then turn his head, and then to turn around or nothing. That's quite simple here. Now, I, I, I gave you the wrong scripture. Let's go to uh, 26. Uh, we just reviewed something. We just went over. That's okay. Uh, let's go to 26 now. 
which we've looked at some of these scriptures before, but we're going back to them again, some of them. 26.10, he hath compassed the waters with bounds. And we just mentioned that, but we're going to mention it again. He hath compassed the water with bounds. I want to mention, I want to mention it a couple of times, because it deals with ends and bounds and boundaries. And we, and we went to Psalm 102 to go back to the foundation again. Let's, let's give a little more foundation, and we're going to wrap it up. We'll take a break here as we have probably one more video on this board, and I'm going to get some more boards out for you as I discuss a little bit, a little bit about how the earth is not going to be moved and, and how the earth is actually just one simple uh, a mesa surrounded by waters. That's all it is. And we're going to take a break right now, and we'll, we'll, we'll probably turn to, um, we're going to go to Job 9.6 and talk about pillars now, because we're just about done. We're getting to the bottom now, and I'm happy to say, excuse me, that we're done, and we're going to move on, and we've enjoyed this uh, illustration here. I've enjoyed it, uh, and I'm very happy to say that, uh, that uh, we, we've done a fair job looking at this, and uh And that's it. We, we, you know, th this is a, a very easy uh, lesson here. Uh, it's one of my easiest lessons because there's very little to concentrate on because we're just dealing with the top, the middle, and the bottom, and we're just identifying the components. And, and we're just talking a little bit about how they were laid down and, and, and you know, really hammering home the fact that it's obvious that heaven is in the waters or in the heavens, and that it's, a, it's a sea of glass, and, and then there's this... Uh, Astrodome and it was garnished and and uh, we have the clouds and we have the sun and moon circling like hands on a clock under the dome that has a tabernacle the sun and the moon have a housing and we have the rainbow from Noah's uh, means mercy God's not going to flood the earth anymore and we have the mountains there and the earth and it's called dirt but it's also called referenced as the waters also and we have the pillars which hold up the earth and the earth is not going to be moved, never. And also that, that pillars have what on them? Have, has anyone ever put a spinning ball on pillars? No. No architect would ever think about doing that. And we're not going to do it either. Okay. We're, we're, we're going to stay quite reasonable here, okay? And we're, and we're going to go to Job 9.6. And... Um, And I think I want, I want to go to 26.7 too, but we'll do that on the next video. Then we're going to go to uh, 15.3 of Psalms, and then Proverbs, Ezekiel, and, and def, we're, we're going to finish. I'll mention to you about gravity and barometric, barometric pressure, and I'll explain to you that there is no such thing as gravity. There's only barometric pressure. That's all there is. And, and I might show you a picture of what the boundaries look like according to some people uh, who've taken some pictures uh, that they could be composites or or, or Photoshop uh, uh, dishonest pictures or whatever it which really doesn't concern me because I'm into the Word of God I, I don't need uh, you know it's like they have the, these movies about the cross of Jesus and, and you know I, I don't want to see the master on the cross really I, I don't want I just don't want to see it I it's not that I can't see it, it's just that I don't want to see it. I already know my master suffered for me, and I really don't need to see all of that stuff, uh, detail and stuff. The Bible says to do this in remembrance of me, and that's all I do. I, I have the Lord's table in my mind, you know, often, that, that I am going to commune with the Lord, and I'm going to partake of his lifestyle and of his sufferings, and I'm going to partake of those. And I will also be resurrected uh, with him at the rapture. So, okay. I don't want to get into a lot of gory nothing. I don't want gory stuff. We don't, I, I don't show a lot of gory stuff. I did show some gory stuff that I felt I had to do uh, with, the, with the adult ministry uh, on the other channel. I showed some pictures of uh, some things that, that are going on in the world, okay? But we're going to stop right now. Jeremiah is going to stop right here. 
And uh, that's it. We'll come right back and just about wrap this up on the next video. And we're looking at uh, 33 now, probably. Okay? Shalom. Peace to you. Maranatha. The Lord is coming and we're just excited. And that's the prime, uh, the big thing we talk about here most often. We rejoice in everything here. That the Lord's going to grant us powers to go into uh, hurting people that the devil has chained. And he's standing over them. He's going to give us powers to deliver them and free them. And we rejoice in those powers. But the power we really rejoice in is the power of his resurrection. And us entering into not only uh, uh, nice experiences on earth, especially helping people and binding up the brokenhearted and, and bringing good psychology to people who are having some psychological problems, but also to think about getting out of here. Shalom and Maranatha.